This video is brought to you by EA Game Changers. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no! You okay, sweetie? Oh boy. Why won't she die? I've been sitting here for like five minutes trying to make her die and it won't work. <laughs> I literally broke everything in her house and she still won't die. <laughs> oh no. Still not dead? You Whatever. I give up. Whatever. It's fine. I don't care. I don't want to see it anyway. Whatever. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, Justina Larson has been crushed underneath the malfunctioning Murphy bed. Justina will be missed. Okay, I, I know I said I gave up and now I feel kind of bad. Well, <laughs> happens I guess. Oh dear, <laughs> oh dear. Well, we had a good run, I guess. It's official. The Sims has redeemed themselves. My friends, this is big news. Okay, I don't know if you noticed, but like the last few stuff packs have been um, controversial, <laughs> but I don't know. We had my first pet stuff. We have mosquito stuff. I liked mosquito stuff. A lot of people were very angry about it, understandably, I think. I don't know. It was a weird one. We had a couple weird ones, but today <laughs> I got early access to the Sims 4 tiny living stuff, which I'm gonna be real is right up my alley. Like the idea of building tiny houses. That's my thing. I think that's like a Sims community thing. We all just like to build tiny stuff. And I think it's really cool how they took this trend that we were all doing anyway. And they're like, oh, you like this? Here, I'll help you do it better. <laughs> and they made it like an actual functional part of the game. We got a little bit more cast stuff, like four hairs, a bunch of really, really, really cute clothes, like genuinely possibly some of the best cast they've added in a long time. They have really stepped up their game with cast items, like coming from university and now into this, they added some really cute stuff. The future of The Sims 4 is bright as far as sweaters go. But I think most importantly, it's a build pack based on build mode and making tiny homes. So there is a new lot type and three tiers of tiny homes within that. So you can change the lot type to a tiny home residential and it suddenly gives you like a number of tiles you need to place. If you look at the requirements, there's three different types. There's a small home with 100 tiles, a tiny home with 64 tiles, and a micro home with 32. Everything that is a tile counts as a tile. So if I wanted to put a patio, all of those things count as adding tiles to this build. So it's kind of hard to cheat. This is already a tiny house. You've missed the micro home mark. <laughs> it's almost too big to be a tiny house. Small houses have 100 tiles though, so you can kind of feasibly have a two-story house. I think that a tier three small home is like actually kind of realistic, especially for starter homes. I mean, that's like basically the size of most of the starter homes that come in game, like this one. And the fun part is that it comes with perks. So each different size has different tiered perks. So the small house, you just get cheaper bills and your Sims are happy all the time, which I'm gonna be real, I don't really get some of these perks. Like I get the concept, but like <laughs> me personally, I don't know if it would work this way for me. But anyway, lower bills are definitely a, a good one. And feeling fine all the time, happy, inspired, and focus buffs last twice as long, which is pretty good. A tier two tiny house, so significantly smaller. This one increases your skills at double the standard rate. Everything is twice as comfortable. Your bills are cheaper and you're happy all the time. I The skill increase at twice the rate is such a big deal. Like for so many challenges, we're thinking like things like rags to riches, stuff like that, where you're kind of trying to focus on skills. You have a tiny house anyway, because you don't have any money. Like this kind of stuff is going to make those challenges so much easier. Like think runaway teen, your, your Sims got a tiny house. They don't even have a house. Their house is like this big, you know? <laughs> so they get everything so much faster. It, it's ideal. And if you're extra lucky with a tier one micro home, you have 32 tiles, pretty small, but your bills are cheaper, your relationship gains are doubled, your plants grow twice as fast, you're happy all the time, your skills increase twice as fast, and you're comfortable all the time. Things are twice as comfortable. So here's what I don't get. <laughs> Me personally, I'm coming from a place where like, you know, I've stayed in a hotel room with my entire family, all five of us in one hotel room. And I'm thinking, you know, I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> My skills aren't going up fast. I'm certainly not growing any plants. Like the idea of being in a small confined space with like lots of people and um, that sounds miserable to me and like it would be the opposite of all these things. Like my relationships would gain twice as slow. Um, <laughs> maybe at least the relationship one. And I certainly don't think it'd be that comfortable, but you know what? I mean, teach their own. And I like the idea of giving you perks in game to have a smaller house. And to kind of test out this system, I built three different tiny homes. I spent 
so much time making these houses, <laughs> but I made one for each tier and they're all vastly different and it's kind of interesting to see how the different size of them impacts it. Like the tier 3 small home, it has space for four sims to sleep in it. The other two only have two sims sleeping in them, but you know, I tried. Starting off with the tier 3 build, we had a hundred tiles to work with, so I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna build a stack of weird houses. So I made this like three-story box, like tiered looking box, and I had stairs on the outside of it to save space, and I, I don't know, I put on medium wall height because I wanted to have the stairs as big as possible so they would look all symmetrical, and it just, I definitely wasted a lot of tiles as far as that goes with like decorative things because I had two tile wide giant doors, you know, it was medium wall height so the stairs were huge, but I think it ended up looking kind of cool, and I fit in two bedrooms and two bathrooms. The first floor is like the living space, so there's a kitchen and a living room and a dining room. Those are all strong words. There's a kitchen and a couch and a dining table, <laughs> but there's lots of kitchen space. It does have cabinets and, and plenty of counter space and stuff, and then Upstairs, there's a kids bedroom that has two kids beds, and the third floor has a Murphy bed and like an adult bedroom for the parents, which is kind of fun. I like the idea of having these like separate bedroom spaces all on different floors. It'd be kind of annoying because you have to like go outside to go upstairs <laughs> for all of them, but that's okay. Like, you know, fresh air, you know? It was so funny using the new items because they have these new items that are like multifunctional. So the TV, that TV I put on the wall just there in the living room, it counts as a TV, a stereo, and a bookshelf. When you click on it, you can do all the functionality of all three of those things. So it's kind of cool how like you can see a bookshelf on the TV and like usually just be decoration, but they've kind of fixed it now with the last update and with these items in the pack where like what looks like a bookshelf actually works like a bookshelf. Even decorative books have bookshelf functionality now, and I think it's so nice to save the space and have that in here. Save space and money, to be honest, because you can only afford and be able to fit so much, but when you have this like cheaper, smaller bookshelf that's also a TV and a radio, I mean my toddlers can bop to the music, I can read to them, like it covers all the bases. For the record though, I did play test these because I was doing kind of like move objectsy cheaty stuff to try and fit as many bathrooms and things in small spaces as possible. These bathrooms do work. They look really small, they're two by two, they're all placed and move objects placed, but they are functional. Your sims can still use the, to the toilet, shower, and sink, so don't worry. I did check, <laughs> I swear. That's the thing about tiny homes, you have to check, especially if you're trying to cheat and try and make things fit as small as possible. Like you have to double check that your sins can actually use stuff because it's kind of risky to be honest, <laughs> some of the things we're doing. Plus, I think my sim almost died when I was testing the Murphy beds. I think one of my only issues with this pack is that you can't see the bed swatches with the bed up in build mode because you can't see what the bed looks like when it's folded into the cabinet. So I had to bring a sim here, have her fold the bed down, then I could check and, and I just kept testing it that way, but it was kind of annoying to have to like go into game and fold the bed down to see what it looks like. They're also kind of expensive. The Murphy beds cost 2100 each, which is sort of sad. They have a version that has a couch on it, one that doesn't have a couch on it, um, but they're both the same price. They're both 2100 simoleons, and I think that's like really pushing it. I wish they had given us like a cheaper version, like if the one without a couch had been cheaper, that would make a lot of sense. I don't really understand why they're the same price. That's like my one qualm <laughs> with this pack. Like 2100 is kind of expensive for a bed that's like up there with some of the most expensive beds, and they also don't have stats. That's listed like it just says energy one on the bed, which is really low. I haven't tested having a sim sleep in it yet, but it doesn't have a comfort level listed, doesn't have an energy level listed, so I don't really understand like <laughs> Maybe it's a, a mistake, but like it doesn't say like energy six like you would expect it to be and considering it's like 2100 simoleons and it can kill your sim like you're literally paying your life savings for a death trap, which is fun sometimes, but maybe um Isn't worth it <laughs> They have a single bed they added too though, and I like the single bed a lot. I think this bed is really cute. It's the same swatches as the Murphy bed, and it has like a little blanket at the end of the bed. It's adorable. I think it fits very nicely. It doesn't look like a kid's bed. I think a lot of single beds that we have in the game are very colorful and like patterned and not very neutral and easy to add into spaces, but these are really nice. And the rug is adorable. The furniture is cute. It like This is a, a win all around for me. I love this pack. <laughs> and honestly, this size of tiny house isn't even that hard to achieve. Like this could just be a normal two bedroom house and, and still be a hundred tiles and just be kind of small and that's totally easy to make a starter home like that and you get the perks of the lesser bills and the, the happier sims. Like it's it's definitely a win all around. You don't have to make it a weird blue stared stack like I did. <laughs> but here she is. This is my finished build. I still have 11 tiles to add if I wanted to. I've only placed 89. And that's including the space upstairs up here. Like this house can be pretty big. Look, I can add like a whole full size extra three by three bathroom if I wanted to. <laughs> but I thought it was kind of cute. I never built something like this with a weird like 
boxy stack thing. I've never really built many modern looking builds. This was definitely out of my comfort zone. It's kind of annoying how you have to go outside to go back upstairs, but you know what? That's not my problem. It's totally fine. And you have to like walk through the kid's bedroom to get to the parent's bedroom staircase to get up. I mean, it's kind of a weird layout. <laughs> there are two desks so your sims can do their homework. They can play on the computer. There's like this weird room because it was technically outside. It's not very well built, but I had fun trying to build it. <laughs> And I like the blue middle box. I think it's interesting, okay? Okay? I also made this one kind of a similar concept with the doors outside and like the two boxes, sort of like that. This one's only one bedroom, it has a Murphy bed upstairs, and it's got a smaller living space downstairs, but this one's got a fun garden. And on this lot size, tier two, you get your skills doubled. So I put a, an easel because I figured like you probably are gonna do painting for money if you if you're doubling your skills twice as fast. Like <laughs> you're definitely gonna be <laughs> doing like a money maker thing like painting or maybe writing or programming of a computer here. I also put a cork board because in case you wanted to have like a pen pal. You don't really have space to have like friends in real life come visit, but you could have your pen pals, you could write to them and then um, yeah, internet friends are the way to go when you've got a house like this. You just, you can't have friends over, I'm sorry, it's not gonna work. <laughs> we have a little kitchen though, and a little dining space, and a couch. I mean, there's definitely all the things you need, even a dresser. Same thing, tiny bathroom, and a grill. I went all out with this. <laughs> I think this one is cute. It was one of my favorite ones that I built. It's definitely a weird, um, look. It's, di it's very different from the other one that I built. I can see myself playing in this though. This is like a nice cheap house. Oh, it's 24,000. It's not even a starter home. I'm so bad. Like, I'm so dumb. I didn't try and make it a starter home though. You could just like get cheaper. Look, I'll fix it. Okay, I didn't fix it, but you get the picture. <laughs> It's fine. It's the columns. It's always the columns. They really get you with the columns. This house is base game and just tiny living though. And I think it's really cute, okay? I was proud of myself. And I made a micro home. <laughs> this one's just 32 tiles. It's a very different style, very much a blue suburban. Just adorable though, big fan. And because on this lot type, your plants grow twice as fast. I put a bunch of planter boxes. I figured you could put them down and like grow things out here. There's a grill and stuff outside so you can make use of your outdoor space because you don't really have much indoor space. This one sleeps two sims as well, and I love the layout of this house. I want to play in it so badly. I think it's so cute how there's like the couch back here that is actually a Murphy bed. There's like these little poof things that kind of work like a couch, but it also kind of looks like maybe a coffee table. When your sim puts the bed down, they're right at the end of the bed. There's a TV back here, also a bookcase and a stereo, works as all the things. Plenty of counter space for cooking, and there's like a little bar stool section. Got a computer, you have a full-size bathroom. I mean, it's got everything you could possibly need. <laughs> I think that island counters are kind of the way to go with tiny houses as far as like having functional eating space because then you can have a place for your sims to cook but also seating for them to eat at. Because if I were to put a table, I mean, I need to have like three tiles being used up, you know? And this is four, but at least it counts as a counter for them to cook on. <laughs> you could also probably get away if you wanted to make it a little bit smaller and maybe have an extra bed. You could get away without having like an extra counter or sink in the kitchen because you at least have a sink in the bathroom. Like you could definitely make this place smaller if it needed to be. I just think this is adorable. I, <laughs> I just like the layout of this a lot. I think it's very realistic and it doesn't look like a bedroom that you're sitting in, which is the perk of the Murphy bed. Because you can put the bed inside a living room and it just looks like a couch, but then when your friends are gone, you can pull it down and actually have a bedroom in there. <laughs> There's plenty of space. I don't know. I, I like this place. I love this pack. I had so much fun doing these. I spent like three hours this morning building tiny houses. Like, <laughs> I'm having a blast. Something I was very curious about, but just to answer your questions, I think you might be worrying too, is if you could turn an apartment into a tiny house lot, and unfortunately you can't, because you can't change the apartment lot type into a tiny house, obviously. But I think it's kind of sad that you can't get the perks, because this is a small space. <laughs> I mean, it's 81 tiles in here, but I could at least get my small home lot lot perks. I could be comfortable and have lower bills, but no. Sorry, Salim. Unfortunately, you do not get either of those things in your stinky, dirty carpet, nasty apartment. <laughs> I kind of have a reputation for being negative somehow about these packs. People are mean to me about it. It's not fair. But listen, just because I sometimes call out when they do things wrong doesn't mean that I hate The Sims. I love The Sims. I love this pack. I had so much fun playing with it. I think I can use these items in all of my gameplay. Like, it doesn't feel like... I think a lot of packs sometimes feel like they need to be intentionally used in order to get any use out of them. Things like Strangerville, you kind of have to, like, make an active choice to, like, move to Strangerville and play the story, which is fine but it isn't necessarily, like, an easy to fit into your regular gameplay kind of pack, but I, I can see myself using these items all the time and like this feature kind of blends so well into all the challenges I play and stuff like that. Like I was saying earlier, I can use this with Rags to Riches or use it with 
my legacy challenges in the beginning to kind of have some boosts in the beginning of my gameplay. And the items are also small and can fit into my cute little tiny bedrooms. I love to make smaller houses, not, not necessarily tiny homes, but like most of the houses I build are kind of on a smaller scale because I think it's more fun to play in smaller houses. And I can just see myself using all of these things so much, which I am really excited about. There was one thing though, just one that I must show you. <laughs> just for the record, Mods are disabled in my game right now. So before you accuse it of being that, they aren't in my game. <laughs> but there appears to be some sort of mistake with the swatches they added. There appears to be some sort of mistake with the swatches on the female hairstyles because they're out of order. And I don't understand how that's happened. Because all the swatches for every single pack, for every single hair, they're all in this exact same order and these two are wrong. To the point that it looks like one of them is missing, they're in like the- they're like in a different wrong order. When I first saw it, I was like, they're missing the- one of the swatches, but this is actually a swatch, it's just so light you can't see it on this far side background. But the swatches are in the wrong order, and I don't understand how that's happened. Genuinely, like, I don't- why? <laughs> it's a dumb thing, but like how- why- why is that there? Why? That like is genuinely so annoying. Everything about that is so annoying. It's not necessarily like a game-breaking problem, but wh why? Oh well. <laughs> Hopefully they fix that soon, as in like in the next patch immediately. Cute hair though. All in all, I think it's a fun pack. I like the concept. I like the idea of them adding on to things they know we like to have already. I mean, I know I said it before, but this is definitely a good example of them seeing us liking something and like a community driven idea and then being like, oh, you like this thing? I'll help you. <laughs> and I think that's awesome. If they could take more of our like challenge concepts and things that we love to do and turn them into packs to benefit us better, I'd love to see more of that in the game coming soon. I mean, it's trendy in real life, tiny houses, it's trendy in The Sims, it's just cool concepts all around. Wow, Lil Simsy didn't make an everything wrong with tiny living video? Canceled. <laughs> She just can't win. She hates on things, she gets hate. She's nice to things, she gets hate. I'm sorry, I don't mean to, I, I don't mean to seem bitter. I like this pack, okay? I genuinely had a lot of fun playing with it. And I think that's that's a key sign of this, right? Like I had fun, I played with it for a long time today and I could definitely see myself using it again in the future. So A plus, 10 out of 10, and you can get an official stamp of Simsy approval from me. This pack comes out on Tuesday the 21st. Costs $10 on Origin as all the stuff packs always do. And I'm looking forward to seeing your tiny house build. It's so fun. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Bye. I've seen people complaining about the fact that your sims can die from Murphy beds, but genuinely the idea of my sims having a random chance of being killed by a bed, amazing. That's like the essence of the sims that we all desire. <laughs> it's so dumb, but so good.